Hey, guys, what's happening? Okay, I'm connected to the modem, right? By the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. No internet, it's the modem. So ever since we've got that ethernet cable connected to the modem, the connection has been beautiful. Praise the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit. <clears throat> Yesterday was a rough day. Didn't feel too good. Felt bloated. Ate kind of too much, but today much better. I feel much better. I feel healthier, more alive, more alert. All glory to the Triune God. All glory to the Father. All glory to the Son, the Lord Jesus. All glory to the Holy Spirit. Yahovah Rapha. Our wholeness, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, all comes from the grace and mercy and love, compassion and pity of the Triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. May He make us perfectly whole and heal us. In Jesus' name, by the wounds of Jesus, the stripes of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the cross of the Lord Jesus, by the life of the Holy Spirit, heal us of all infirmities and imperfections and diseases, spiritually, psychologically, <clears throat> physically, in Jesus' name. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Fill my chest, my lungs, my throat with the breath of life, the health I need to do this for your glory. You don't need me. We need you. Watch over us, Father. Cover us by the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Wash us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, and seal us by your Spirit. You are God, God over all creation, God over all diseases, God over all infirmities. You are God over the corona, <clears throat> coronavirus, Father. In the face of the blood of Jesus, the coronavirus is nothing. And we plead the blood of Jesus as our covering and the covering of our loved ones. Cover my daughters with the blood of Jesus and seal them by your spirit. Flood them, flood us in your love, Father. Strengthen my voice, Lord, to stay strong and healthy for these sessions. Anoint the sound of my voice to be pleasing to the ears of your servants, Father. Fill us, fill me with wisdom and knowledge, understanding from your spirit. Save me from stammering and stuttering and confusion and from error, Father, please, and destroy all distractions of the evil one. Bring in your children, Father, to these sessions. Bring them in droves to hear as your spirit uses me to glorify Jesus. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, increases in us and we decrease and may sit and throne upon our hearts, Father. Sit and throne upon our hearts, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, make our hearts the throne of Jesus. And help us, Holy Spirit, to become more like Jesus. We need you. We trust in you. We love you. Save us from panicking, Father. Save us from panicking, Lord Jesus. Save us from panicking, Holy Spirit. We are not like the world that panicked because we have no hope. You have not given us a, fear, a spirit of fear or timidity, but of boldness and of a sound mind. Because we know no matter what, Christ is risen, he's alive, and death has been conquered by the power of Jesus. So no matter what, whether you save us from coronavirus or you allow us to get it, ultimately, at the end of the day, Christ has conquered death, and we shall live in his presence forever. And death will be completely abolished at his return when he raises our bodies to be glorified and transformed like his glorious body. Please remind us of that, Father, not to be lip service, to truly believe this from our heart and live for you and love you and trust your word. Because you are God. You are real. You live. <clears throat> and because you live, we live also. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' almighty name, Yahweh, the Father, Holy Spirit. I'm going to have a long night today. After this session, after this session, I got to do another live stream. Is it Blog Talk Radio Jihad for Usama Dakdok, our precious brother in Jesus Christ, Usama Dakdok, a soldier of Jesus Christ who's got a ministry. He has a weekly show every Saturday. It's for two hours. It's on Blog Talk Radio Jihad. I think Protestant has the link. So I'm going to be going live right after because it's going to start 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And right now it's 7.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That means I have to be done by 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. No, what, what am I saying? Not Eastern Standard Time. May the Lord Jesus Christ save me from all errors. Please, Holy Spirit, even minor and significant ones. In Jesus' almighty name, crucify our flesh. I hate when I'm wrong. Not Eastern Standard Time. I'm sorry. We're going to go live 9 p.m. Central Standard uh, Time. You know, this is the one thing that sucks about America. 
sucks. Yeah, I'm going to use the word suck. Like suck a lemon. The different time zones. Guys, get your time zone straight. 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York, Canadian time. I'm going to be going live. And right now it's 7.06 p.m. Central Standard Time. That means I have to be done. 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, because that leaves me with half an hour to prepare. Lord Jesus, loosen my tongue and save me from confusion and error. In Jesus' name. Wow. These time zones. So that said, it's open Q&A, as well as dealing with some Muslim objections. My sister Maureen Dahoul is here. You you obviously miss, you, miss me, huh, Maureen? You and your sister? You haven't seen me in a while. Maureen and her sister Shami were my partners in crime in Chicago, evangelists on fire for the Lord. And we used to, <clears throat> we used to have a love-hate relationship. I loved to hate them, and they hated to love me. <laughs> Okay, I think I was asked two questions already. I know there's three questions, and I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit to guide me to answer the question that the Holy Spirit wants me to answer. We trust the Holy Spirit to take over because he's the perfect teacher, and we trust him. So as long as he takes over, you'll be blessed. <clears throat> so I, I remember the three questions, but before I proceed, let me just see if there's other questions. Who has questions here? Yes, exactly. One was about the book of life, and the other was about the wrath that Jesus Christ our Lord experienced on the cross. And there was one that I answered in Discord. You guys miss out. I don't know if you know this. When we're done here, we all go to Discord. Now, I'm not there all the time teaching. So last night, after the session was over, I spent over two hours on Discord answering some beautiful questions, and we went in-depth in answering those questions, and we feasted on a lot of spiritual meat by the grace of Jesus Christ. And even today, and thank the Lord, today was recorded, Thou Shall Not Pontificate in Protestant Believer, recorded a two-and-a-half-hour session I did on Discord, two-and-a-half hours. And they're going to edit it and put it on my YouTube channel. So glory to God. Praise God for these brothers and sisters, the mods and the brothers and sisters who love me for the sake of Jesus, who do the recording, who do the editing, because I couldn't do this without them. And they don't get charged for this, by the way. They don't get a single dime. You know why? Because they know I'm in full-time ministry and I'm a broke apologist. right? And it's not going to help that this epidemic is going to scare people. They're going to go into panic. And because of that, they're going to be hoarding not just goods but money because they're going to panic thinking that they're going to run out of money because they're not going to work. And so what happens? Who gets affected? Ministries and ministers, right? But God is good. He provides for us. All right. Thank you, Christ is almighty. If I am the best, it's because Jesus Christ made me that way. May he save me from my flesh and make us all holy unto the Lord Jesus. Now, Let's see. Any questions? Because I have three already. Scott Weldon, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you, brother. I will get back to you. We'll talk on the phone soon. Don't think I have forgotten you. Even though I try my best to forget you, you make sure I don't. <laughs> Discord is the replacement to Pal Talk. Discord is a server where you can go on, talk to people on the microphone, or have text conversations. It's a replacement to Pal Talk. Side note, by the way, just to let you know. Side note. I actually went to Walmart to try to get some Lysol, Lysol wipes and or Clorox wipes because I wanted to wipe down some of the, <clears throat> you know, just the computer everything because my brother told me to go do it. I go to Walgreen and it's empty. It's all empty. I go, you got to be kidding me, man. No toilet paper, no hand sanitizer, no wipes. So then I go to the Walgreens. Gone. No toilet paper. No, <laughs> no hand sanitizer, no wipes. And then I told the guy, I asked the manager, I said, guys, uh, can I ask you a question? When are you going to restock? He goes, Friday. I go, wait, wait, wait. Yesterday was Friday. He said, yeah, yesterday we got a shipment. Gone. Guys. I mean, my goodness, Christians, let me encourage you again. 
I'm not saying be lazy, idle, complacent. Be wise as serpents, innocent as doves. Do everything you can on your part to make sure you're healthy and safe and your loved ones are healthy and safe. But please don't panic. My goodness. If you're going to get the coronavirus, you're going to get it because you don't know who has it and how fast it can creep up, creep up on you. If the coronavirus is going to send you in a panic, then what's going to happen when the Antichrist shows up? What's going to happen when they force you to swear allegiance to the Antichrist or you can't eat or drink? Then what? Come on. I just heard today that France and Israel have shut down all restaurants. Okay. All right. Folks, honestly, this is now the time to show your faith and let your faith shine. Do you really believe in King Jesus, that he's alive, he truly lives, and you're not an atheist? Then you cry out to Jesus, Lord Jesus, you are the God of the coronavirus. You're in control of it. Give me the grace not to get it. But if I do, give me the power of the Holy Spirit to even honor you through that virus and during this time so people will see the difference between someone who believes in Jesus and someone who doesn't have Jesus. We don't despair, Lord. May you be glorified through this outbreak, right? And believe me, this coronavirus would not spread unless the Lord Jesus allowed it to, unless the triune God had a reason to spread because this coronavirus will be used to bring God glory, right? As people can see, all it takes is a little virus to wipe you out and you better be ready <clears throat> to answer to the God of all creation and your only hope of escaping this, right? The Lord's going to use this to bring him, himself glory, to sanctify Christians, to expose what's in the hearts of Christians, because if Christians, you're panicking at this, oh my goodness, what, do you, what will happen to you when the Antichrist shows up? Or what will happen to you if a group of jihadi terrorists take you captive and they take out a sharp knife and a bot to sli slice your throat. What are you going to do then? Come on. We have to be the example. We have to shine. We have to show the world the difference between trusting in the living Savior and the hope we have in spite of this epidemic and you who have no hope because you don't know him who lives. Let us make a difference. Let us be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Let us show the world the difference from those who know and trust in the living Savior, from those who don't. Don't let the Muslims or the Hindus shame us, right, with their confidence in a false God that doesn't exist. Our God is real. He lives. Let us bring him glory. Let us glorify him. Let us honor him. Let us love him. You get it? So with that said, I didn't want to get on a rant, but anyway, I'm going to go into these questions, but I'll give a minute to see. Whoever has a question. And by the way, Protestant Believer gave the link for tonight's talk. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to go live talking about Islam and issues related to Islam on Blog Talk Radio Jihad. Right there. He gave you the link. Pro uh, Protestant, click on the link if you want to join me later. Click on the link if you want to join me later. Okay. David, what was your question again? Let me check it out because I was going into a rant. Lord, forgive me. I pray everything I say will be from the Spirit, because if it's from the Spirit, you'll be blessed. Yes, you can love your salvation, Absa. Love your salvation, because your salvation is Jesus. All right. What was the question, David Julius? It's going to take me too long to scroll up and find it. David, dude, you're one lazy dude. I just said, don't be lazy and idle. What a lazy dude, man. By the way, let me give you a verse to go by. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. Let me give you two verses in light of the coronavirus. No, it's not talking about washing of the blood. It's talking about being renewed, transformed, regenerated, rejuvenated. The washing being metaphorical for being transformed, being new, <clears throat> refreshed, rejuvenated, regenerated. I mean, it's right there in the text itself. But Proverbs 6, verses 6 to 8. I know, I know what you meant. I was pulling your leg. Proverbs 6, verses 6 to 8. I'm going to give you two passages, 
Well, I'll give you four. I'm going to get, guys, please, write these down, or if you have your Bibles open, underline them or highlight them, and commit these to memory. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. I'm going to give you four passages. Listen. Go to the ant, O sluggard, you lazy, idle. Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Okay, you know what he's saying? Learn from the example of the ant. The ant prepares for the winter in the summer. This is why I said, Father, Son, and Spirit, Lord Jesus, bless the connection in Jesus' name. Okay? This is why I said, listen to what I'm saying again. This is why what I said. Do all you can to prepare for the virus to be safe, but don't despair and panic. So here, God's wisdom, his beautiful wisdom says, look at the ant. The ant prepares for the winter in the summer. The ant doesn't wait for the last minute. So it's not a sin, and there's no shame in stocking up. Do that, but don't panic and freak out. Okay? And this is the time to love your neighbor as yourself. So did you get that? Proverbs 6, 6 to 8? That's one. The first verse. Did you get it? So it is not a sin or a shame to stock up. Stock up. That's fine. But don't be paranoid and panic and freak out. Okay. So now another passage. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Let me just encourage you. And these are also words to encourage me. Remind me, my God is real and he lives and he loves me. And even if I get affected by the coronavirus and, and I die, because that can happen. It may be God's will for me to enter heaven through that, as long as I enter his presence and worship Jesus. Okay. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Guys, here's the other verse. You keep him in perfect, perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Bam. Underline that. Highlight it. You keep him. As the Holy Spirit loosens my tongue to speak clearly. You keep him in perfect peace. Shalom. You keep him perfectly calm, whose mind is stayed on you, who's thinking about you, not the world. Oh, yeah, As you focus on Jesus, meditate on his word, the Bible, and pray to him and worship him, he keeps you perfectly calm because he trusts in you. One more time, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Okay. Guys, no side talks, no tangents. Focus, guys. I want to bless you. Listen. One more time. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Guys, please read this with me. I'm giving you verses that you focus on, recite, meditate on during this epidemic. You keep him, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. It will stick with the King James. Did you guys catch it? Send Rebecca out of here, please. She has no shame. Do you believe it, though? Here's my question. Do you believe it? You read it, but do you believe it? You know how you're going to know that you believe it? When you start acting accordingly. When you start acting accordingly. Me too, Angie. That's the Holy Spirit in you and me and all of us. Are you with me there? Let me give you now a couple more. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. Excuse me. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. Everything is great and beautiful if you're in Jesus Christ, online English teacher. If you're walking with Jesus and love with Jesus, everything's great. Okay. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God gave us a spirit, spirit not of fear, as the Holy Spirit protects me from error, for the glory of Jesus. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Now, Protestant, post that in the King James Version again. Now, watch again. Guys, please pay attention to these passages, and we're going to answer some questions. Yeah, I don't know. Protestant's anti-King James now. I'm going to have to smash him. A little sinner. Okay. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Protestant, you got to post that again because I want people to now test themselves if they truly believe in a risen Savior who's alive and almighty to save. Let's see. 
One more time. One more time. And thank Protestant for helping me to help you. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, courage, boldness, and of love, and of a sound mind. Do you believe that, saints? Do you truly believe the Bible is God's word, his voice, and the God of the Bible is real, he's alive, and Jesus rules? Do you truly believe that, honestly? Then you're not going to panic. You're not going to freak out because it says God gave you the spirit of a sound mind, of confidence, of power, assurance, then act accordingly. Don't shame the name of Jesus. Don't act like the unbelievers who have no hope. Don't do that because then what you do is you shame the Lord and grieve him because you show him it's all lip service for me, Lord. I read your word and I tell people I believe it. When, when push comes to shove, I don't even believe whether you're really there or you care. Don't do that. He is there. He is real. He is alive. He's in love with you. Trust him. Please, and I say that for myself, Holy Spirit, all of us, please. Okay, Romans 8, verse 15, but we're going to read 14 to 17. Romans 8, verse 15, but we're going to read 14 to 17. And bless our sister Marcy Lynn. Pray for Marcy Lynn. She's a nurse. As a nurse, I have no fear unless they have bugs that has met sweet, okay? Pray for this sister. God, use her mightily because she's going to be Jesus to a lot of sick people, showing love, the love of Christ, and pouring into them. Romans 8, 14 to 17. Read with me, guys. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, you claim to be led by the Spirit of God, you are then the sons of God, the daughters of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You are not enslaved to fear if you are born of the Spirit of God. But you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Did you believe that? Do you believe you are led by the Spirit, born of the Spirit, that you are a son or a daughter of God? Then you don't have the Spirit that enslaves you to fear. You are not a slave to fear. You are a slave to the living God, a child of the living God who loves you more than a father could ever love you, father more than ever could love you. And he's in love with you. But now is the test. Okay? Now is the test. Are you going to trust him? I'm not saying you won't get coronavirus. No, no, no. I wouldn't be that stupid or lie to you. God will allow and permit even Christians who love Jesus to get the coronavirus. What I'm saying is, will you trust him even when you get the coronavirus? And will you still praise him if you get it and trust him? Right? That's what I'm saying. Let me show you an example of it in the Old Testament. Let me show you. Let me show you the testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Look at their words carefully. Now, guys, I really need you to pay attention and focus for the glory of God. Lord, bring them. We exceed 200 for your glory. Okay, Daniel 3, 16, 18. Watch here. Watch what they said. Notice faith speaking here. Faith from the Spirit. Daniel 3, 16, 18. Watch here. And I'm going to give you an example of what happens when you don't focus on Jesus. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. matter. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. He will. But now notice faith. Notice faith, verse 18. Notice what they say. God will save us from you, your ty tyranny. But now notice faith. But if not... If for some reason God decides not to deliver us from your ty tyranny, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. This is faith. My God will save me, my daughters, my household for coronavirus. But if not, I will still worship him. I will still serve him. I will still love him because he's my God. That's faith.
And here's a woman of faith. The Lord Jesus flood you, Luisa, and your family, and is infinite love, compassion, and mercy, and give you a joy that transcends understanding. She lost two little boys in 2009. She didn't lose them. They're in the company of Jesus, kept safely for her arrival. She will see them again and hug them again and kiss them again. You know how I know? You know how I know this is true? Because her God, Jesus Christ, is alive. Her sons are alive. And they're alive in his presence. And Louisa, you will hug them again and kiss them again. And death will never separate you from them ever again. Believe because your Lord is alive and they live. Okay? That's faith right there speaking. That woman just spoke from faith. Luisa, I promise you, the day comes, the master, the Lord Jesus, utters these words to you. He will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. But then he's going to say, Luisa, I have something for you, my beloved child, who is not ashamed of me, who didn't deny me, even when you lost your two sons. He's going to say, Luisa, behold your sons. And then he's going to call your sons by name and say, Behold your mother, embrace her, and death will never, ever separate you guys ever again. That's his promise to you. Jesus says, because I live, you will live also. That's his promise, Louisa. That's his promise, believe, and you do. Okay. Everyone with me so far? No, it's the Bible that's deep. I'm just an instrument in the Holy Spirit's hand for the glory of Jesus. Now, let me give you an example from Peter. What happens when you keep your eyes off of Christ? Now, let me give you an actual real-life event that took place showing what happens when you don't focus on God. Let's look at Isaiah 26.3 one more time. We receive that promise and blessing for all of us. Okay, Isaiah 26, 3, one more time. One means yes, two means no. Isaiah 26, 3, one more time read. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Now notice condition. The condition is you have to focus on God, keep your eyes on God, think of God, think of his word and his promises and believe. If you take your focus off of God, you will sink. You understand? The condition. Here's God's promise. I will keep you in perfect peace provided you focus on me, think of me, look to me, focus on my word, believe my word, I'll keep you in peace. The moment you take your eyes off of Jesus, you're going to sink. Now let me show you that taking place in an actual real life event from the Bible. Okay. Matthew 14. 25 to 33, but do me a favor. Do me a favor. Break it in sections. Go Matthew 14, 25 to 30, and then 31 to 33. Matthew 14, 25 to 30, and then 31 to 33. Watch here. Watch here. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Right? Right? And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Guys, you got to pay attention. Read more than you type. Okay. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. And Jesus still speaks to you today. When you read that, Jesus is talking to you directly because the Bible is his voice to you right now. So he's saying to us, be of good cheer. It is I, ego in me, I am. Be not afraid. Now watch. Watch happens to Peter when his mind is not stayed on Jesus. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Then give me the power to walk on the water like you're walking. And he said, come. Now watch this. Come, now watch this. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, boisterous, powerful wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Did you see that? When did Peter sink? When he took his eyes off of Jesus. 
when he took his focus off of Jesus and started focusing on his surroundings, the winds and the waves, his fear took over and he sunk. How does that apply to you today? The moment you start focusing on the storms in your life, right, the waves in your life, the storms of problems and troubles, you start focusing on those things, you're guaranteed to sink. So what do you learn from this real life? It's a real miracle. This really happened. Jesus did this miracle. But he did the miracle to teach you a spiritual truth, to teach you a lesson. You will have storms in your life. You will have winds and waves and the sea beating against you, trying to destroy you. But don't be afraid. I am the Lord, the God who has control over the storms in your life, the waves in your life, the winds in your life. I control them. They cannot consume you. They cannot swallow you. If you focus on me, I will still them and give you peace. Okay? Are you catching it now? Now, Matthew 14, 31 and 33. Is it sinking in now? Matthew 14, 31 and 33. Watch here. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? O you of little faith, why did you doubt? Matt, you want to get blocked for not paying attention and trying to make it your own agenda? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped, saying, of a truth, thou art the son of God. Did you catch it? Here's what's beautiful about your master. Even when you take your eyes off of him and begin sinking, he doesn't take his eyes off of you. And even in that predicament, he will come and lift you up. But his, his question is very simple. Why did you doubt? Have I ever failed you? Have I ever disappointed you? Has there been a time when I wasn't there for you? So why would you doubt? You of little faith. When have I abandoned you? When have I turned my back on you? When did you go through hardship and I wasn't there for you? Never doubt. Focus on me. Worship me, the Son of God. And you will be more than conquerors. Because you have the victory in me. In me, as long as you focus on me, set your mind on me and my word. Glory be his name. He is alive. He is real. He is reality. Coronavirus is nothing in the face of Jesus and the power of the blood of his cross. Believe it. All right? So one more time, Daniel 3.18, and then we go into the Q&A. Daniel 3.18, and we'll go into the Q&A. Watch here. Notice the response of faith. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. The response of faith. Look what he says. But if not, if God chooses not to save us from your hand and allow us to be consumed by the flames that you're about to throw us in, even if he doesn't save us from coronavirus, even if he wants us to get the coronavirus, be it known unto thee, let the world know. O king, let the world know that we will not serve your gods. We will not serve the God of secularism, the God of atheism. None of that. Nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up, because we will continue to worship King Jesus, the Son of the living God. Okay? Clear? So again, I trust that was the Holy Spirit moving me in this direction to talk about our attitude in light of the coronavirus. Folks, Jesus is worthy, and we don't love him enough. We need to love him more. Let us not shame him and dishonor him by panicking. Let us not act like the world who don't have hope. This is now where you're going to know, do you really believe the Bible is God's word? 
These are not just the words of men, make believe, but Jesus is really alive and he is God and these are his words. Then let's show it. Let's show it. Let's show it. And again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you won't get coronavirus. Oh, this is in Jesus' name. Sorry. Sorry about that. Hopefully it doesn't keep it. Okay. I'm not saying you won't get coronavirus. So what if you do? You think Jesus is going to abandon you? You think the God who will spare some from getting coronavirus is no longer God when you get it? So now imagine you get it. Oops, I'm sorry. Now that you got it, you're all on your own because I'm afraid I'm going to get infected. Really? The God who will save some from coronavirus is still the same God who will be with those who have coronavirus. And if he's pleased to give them the grace to overcome it. But if this is his way of bringing you into glory, then he'll use that to bring you in glory where you'll be perfectly whole, perfectly healed. No more pain, no more disease, no more sadness or misery or sin. So he is your God if you don't get the coronavirus. He is your God if you get the coronavirus and overcome it. And he is your God if you get the coronavirus and enter his presence. Okay? Thank you, Medic for Christ. See, even unbelieving classmates are making a mockery of the faith of Christians. Oh, it's the end of the world. Let us not shame Jesus Christ. And so with that said, I encourage you. The president in America said, tomorrow we'll make it a national day of prayer. Say extra prayers and even fast, especially for those with weak immune systems, respiratory problems, and the elderly, because they need to be shown the love of Jesus. Because there are people in need that are dependent on us, the hands and feet of Jesus, to help them. Okay, now with that said, with that said, let's open up to questions. I was asked the question about the book of life. Luisa, you're here. What do you want to know about the book of life exactly? I have talked about it in the past. I'll, I don't mind repeating it again. Amen, King of Kings. And you know what? Be grateful he knows you and he's in love with you. I think Luisa had a question. If not, okay. Someone else asked a question earlier then. Yeah, this is the second question on whether you can lose salvation. Okay, some of the questions, let me be upfront and clear. Some of the questions that you ask me, I have to make sure you're aware that you have Christians who hold to different opinions regarding some of these questions. Okay. Does that mean the Bible is vague and unclear on this? No, it doesn't mean that. It means that. Though the Bible has a clear answer, we may not be able to discern what that answer is for a variety of reasons, right? If the Bible is clear on these subjects, please, my God, sorry, I don't know why it's buffering, but it's much better than before. So be patient. Don't panic. In Jesus name, the Internet connection is much better. OK, if the Bible is clear. on Let's say the topic of salvation or whether you can lose it or not then why do we have differences of opinion? That that can be for a variety of reasons. Number one, the reason why you can have difference of opinion, because not everyone has the same level of spiritual maturity and understanding. Some people, by the grace of God, have been given a level of understanding, insight into the scriptures that others don't have, and that's the grace of the Holy Spirit. So number one, the reason why there's a difference of opinion, because not everyone is on the same level of spiritual maturity and understanding. The second reason is people are wedded to their traditions. In other words, depending on your background as a Christian, if you've been raised in a church that says you can never lose your salvation and you believe that's what the Bible teaches, then you're going to read the Bible with those lenses. But if you've been taught that you can lose your salvation and that's your tradition, then you're going to read the Bible with those lenses. So at times, the reason why we have differences of opinion is because each one of us come to the Bible not neutral, not with a blank slate, but with traditions and opinions and viewpoints that have molded our thinking and shaped our way of seeing the Bible, right? 
Now, if you believe you can lose your salvation, then you're going to think the group that thinks you can't lose your salvation, they're guilty of not being mature enough spiritually or reading their traditions into the text. So each camp is going to accuse the other of either not being spiritually enlightened enough or reading their traditions into the text, right? You get my point? So each side is going to accuse the other of being guilty of reading tradition into the text or of not having attained a level of spiritual maturity and insight to understand what the text says clearly. Okay, now that said, I have to say that because I have to make sure you understand there are issues we can agree to disagree on and still be brothers and sisters in Christ. This is one of them. If you think you can't lose your salvation, and or if you think you can, we can strongly disagree with one another, but still realize we are still brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. So if I'm wrong, that doesn't mean I'm not saved. Or if you're wrong, doesn't mean you're not saved. So when you handle these issues, make sure you come with that viewpoint in mind. If I believe I can't lose my salvation, but this brother or sister thinks he, he or she can, and that's what the Bible teaches, I'm going to try to convince him or her they're wrong, I'm right. But if they're not convinced, they're still my brothers, they're still my sisters, we still worship the same Jesus, we're born. Sorry, guys, it's buffering real bad. In Jesus' name, Lord, bless the connection, okay? You understand? Did you hear that part, what I said? A lot of satanic attacks. I said that earlier in this court. Every time when we're about to get a blessing, a miraculous blessing from the Lord, Satan will come and distract and attack any way he can. That happened in discord. It's happening now. Okay? But Jesus Christ is greater than Satan in all creation. He's almighty over Satan in all creation. And he will give us the victory in Jesus' name. Okay. Everyone with me so far before I answer the question. Everyone with me so far before I answer the question. If you believe you can lose your salvation and someone else thinks you can this is something you can agree and disagree and still love each other and respect each other and not view the other as an enemy who's not saved. Okay? Okay. Now, let me tell you my tradition. I was raised and taught a tradition that says if you're truly born of the Spirit and you're guided by the Spirit, there's no way you can lose salvation because the Spirit will not allow you to walk away permanently. You may fall for a season, but the Spirit will keep convicting you and making your life miserable until you return to the feet of Jesus. That's the tradition I was taught. So if you ask me, I believe that if you're born of the Spirit, God will keep you and even convict you if you desire to walk away to return because your life will be empty and miserable without Jesus. That's what I believe. Okay. But I have to say with all sincerity and honesty. Now hear me out. There are lots of verses in the Bible that if you read them, clearly <clears throat> warn those who are saved that if they don't walk in union with the Spirit and endure by the grace of God's Spirit and turn away, they can be cut off from Christ. So this position of mine, is one of the most difficult positions to be able to prove because there are passages that do speak about those who are connected to Christ will be cut off if they refuse to walk in union with the Spirit. So this is why that's one of those issues I don't debate with anyone because there is plenty of verses to support those who believe that you can lose salvation. I don't know why it's bad today. I hope it's maybe just the weather, right, in Jesus' name. Anyway, sorry about that. I'm connected. If it gets worse, then I don't know. It was good. It was doing good so far, and I don't have the Internet on. All right. So you get my point? Let me repeat again. Yes, I am on Ethernet. The Internet is off, and I'm on the Ethernet cable. It's going to happen, guys. Don't, don't get paranoid. Sometimes it's not even the cable. It may be something else. But you're hearing me. So now you hear what I just said? There are a lot of passages that talk about those who are to connected to Christ who can walk away of their own volition and be cut off. So this is a difficult passage for me to demonstrate because I am convinced that if you're born of the Spirit, the Spirit will work in you in such a way that even if you turn away for a season, He'll keep convicting you, keep convicting you 
making you feel empty without Jesus until you return to the feet of Jesus. That's my position. So this is one of those topics I don't debate because in all honesty, in all honesty, there's plenty, plenty of passages that do strongly argue for a Christian turning away from Christ of his, of his, of his or her own volition as the Spirit loosens my tongue and be cut off, not because Jesus rejected him, not because Jesus cut him off, but because they chose not to remain in union with Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. I will recommend a debate for you guys to listen because I think it's one of the best debates on this subject. I want you to listen. It's on YouTube. James White's debate with Trent Horn of Catholic Answers Apologetics Ministry. And I have to honestly say Trent Horn, and I say this respectfully. I don't want you to think I'm attacking James White. I think he schooled James White in the debate. Trent Horn took the position that you can lose your salvation according to the Bible. And he said something which is true. Historically, and even now, that has been the dominant position. If you read church history, many of the church fathers thought you could walk away from Christ and be cut off from Christ because you refused to remain faithful to Christ. And that's the majority position today. Yep, Trent Horn versus James White. Are you aware that most Christian denominations, Protestants, Roman Catholics definitely, Orthodox, all believe you can lose your salvation if you turn away from Christ or do something to sever yourself from union with Christ. That is the majority position. I can't lie. And some of your heroes, some of you guys, how many of you guys love William Lane Craig? It's not, could be, brother. I have a series on this. Have you watched my series on communion of saints? Asking Mary to pray for you is not worship. It is not prayer in the sense of praying to God as an act of worship. I have multi-part series on that. Listen to the evidence. You know, some of your heroes believe you can lose salvation. William Lane Craig is one of them. William Lane Craig is an Armenian Christian philosopher, meaning he believes he's, he's from the Wesleyan tradition. A believer who's born again can lose their salvation. William Lane Craig. You know who else believes that? Now, that doesn't mean anything. William Lane Craig is not the Apostle Paul. But I'm just giving you an idea that even prominent Christians who love the Lord, who are being used mightily by the Spirit to glorify Christ and refute all these false ideologies like atheism and secularism. Michael Brown. Michael Brown is another brother in Christ who believes you can lose your salvation. Now, some people... Anyway. Everyone with me there? So let me again answer the question. There are plenty of passages that strongly support a, a believer can be cut off from Christ, severed from Christ, if he or she refuses to walk in union with the Spirit and or turn away from Christ, right? But there are also passages that strongly support that if you're born of the Spirit, God will do such a work in your heart and mind to change you that you cannot permanently walk away from Christ because then you're going to be miserable feel empty and lost, and you're going to hunger to return to Jesus again. You with me? Are you with me there? And the reason why I didn't give you any passages is because there are too many passages, and I'll be here just talking about that. Now, I'm going to give you two passages, two passages, okay? One that supports that if someone is born of the Spirit, God will preserve him or her and work in her, him and her in such a way that they'll never permanently turn away from Christ. And another passage that says you can be connected to Christ, confess Christ, but if you refuse to remain in union with Christ, you'll be cut off. Are you ready? I'm just going to give you two. Uh, could be. Do you want to get blocked? No, no, just tell me you want to get blocked. Tell me, yes, you want to get blocked. Because now you're being silly and divisive. Did I not just tell you I got series on this issue? Is it prayer? So notice your dishonesty. You're not asking me a question because you want to hear the answer. You want me to, to confirm what you believe, but you're wrong. Stop it or I'm going to block you. Okay. Are you ready now? John 15 verses 1 to 6. Well, we're going to read all the way to 8. John 15 verses 1 to 8. Why would CP spank me? What are you talking about? 
John 15, verses 1-8. Okay, let's read. Jesus speaking, guys, this is where I need you to listen. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Okay, every branch in me. See, notice, this is not talking about an unbeliever. An unbeliever is not in Christ. So this is clearly referring to believers, right? Every branch in me. Muslims are not in him. Buddhists are not in him. Christ-denying Jews are not in him. This is referring to those who say we believe in Jesus and he's our Lord and Savior. Every branch in me, right, right, <clears throat> that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, God taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, he prunes it so it can bear more fruit, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now watch. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, condition. Remain in me. Have fellowship with me. Remain in union with me. How do you remain in union with Christ? Praying to him, speaking to him, singing to him, reading his word, actively acting upon his word. It's not, that doesn't mean it saves you, but it shows that you truly love the Lord because you're honoring the Lord by doing what he asks of you. And I'll give you an example with marriage in a minute. But pay attention. Verse 4. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. See, if you cut off the branch from the vine, it's dead. It withers. Its life comes from the root of the vine that the vine is attached to, right? Okay. So Jesus is your life. He's your root. Okay. Now, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. You got to remain in union with me to be fruitful and pleasing to my father. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him. The same bringeth forth, pay attention, the same bringeth forth <clears throat> much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Now watch here. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words, it is how you remain in him, my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. This passage is strong. You with me there? This passage is powerful. Powerful for those who believe you can be cut off and lose salvation if you refuse to remain in union with Christ. Right? Very powerful. Now, in my... In the, in the days when I was a Calvinist, five-point Calvinist, I would do everything I can to explain this away. No more. I don't explain it away anymore. Okay? Do you know why? Because I do not want to force passages to agree with another set of passages in order for it to make sense in my mind. I want to amen everything God's word says, even passages that are paradoxical, that may seem to be a contradiction to me, but makes perfect sense to God. So my responsibility is not try to figure it all out, but say amen to your word, Father. Amen to your word, Lord Jesus. Amen to your word, Holy Spirit. This is true. This is true. I don't know how to reconcile them, but I affirm all of it. With me there? Okay, but now... Let me give you another passage that seems to teach the opposite. That a believer who's truly saved, born of the Spirit, will be transformed in such a way that God will work in him so that that person will not and cannot be cut off from Christ permanently because he'll be convicted, he'll be miserable, and desire to return to Christ. Romans 8, 35 to 39. Romans 8, 35 to 39. So I'm trying to be as honest as I can with scriptures and honestly tell you, sometimes you won't be able to reconcile these passages. That's not because they're contradictory. It's because you are limited, finite, imperfect. You can't understand everything and therefore expect to find things in the Bible that you won't be able to fully reconcile. But they're still true because all of them are the words of God and God cannot contradict himself. But now... Romans 8, 35 to 39. Let's read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, the coronavirus? No. Distress, the epidemic, 
People panicking? No. Persecution? That won't even separate us from the love of Christ. Famine? No. Being naked? Homeless? No. In peril, danger? Or the threat of someone killing us? The sword? No. None of that will separate you from the love of Christ. Because the love of Christ is all powerful. Christ's love is almighty to save you. As it is written, for thy sake, your sake, Jesus, Muslims hate us, atheists hate us, secularists want us to be thrown in prison because we love you for your sake. We are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. They can do what they want. They can throw us in prison. They can whip us. They can beat us. They can behead us. But that will fail in making us deny Christ because we conquer overwhelmingly by his blood, by his love that's in us and that covers us. Okay, that's what it's saying here. I'm trying to bring out the meat of this passage. Now, let's continue. 38, 39. 38 and 39. Admins, get rid of the filthy dogs, the sons of Satan. We're here to mock. 38, 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, meaning evil, evil spirit beings, rulers, and the heavenly realms, okay? Even government authorities, even the president, right? Nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, in order to bring this passage out clear, more clearly, Protestant, now do me a favor, quote it in the ESV, Romans 8, 38, 39. I don't know if you can ask your godly grandma in heaven because you have to know she is in heaven for certain. So don't ask me these questions again. I'm warning you, this is the second time. Romans 8, 38, 39. For I am sure that neither death, meaning even dying, maybe because of cancer or the coronavirus or some disease or because they're about to behead you, even death, even death, nor anything that you experience in life, when it says life means nothing in life, okay, nor angels, nor rulers, whether evil demonic rulers or human rulers nor things that you're currently experiencing nor things that you will experience in the future no power in creation right no matter how high the problem how deep the, the hole nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god that is in christ jesus our lord post romans 8 38 39 again send could be out of here he needs to go i don't want him here anymore Okay, Romans 8, 38, 39. One more time, because we got... Notice, folks, the satanic distraction. How many attacks of the children of the devil or agents of the devil that did not allow me to finish explaining clearly the import of these passages? And notice even Protestant dropped the ball. He posted 38 again. He posted it twice. Romans 8, 38 to 39. But that's good news, folks. That means Satan is angry and Jesus, our Lord, is being glorified. Take that as a sign that Satan's angry. We're delighting the heart of our Lord Jesus. Praise his holy name. Okay, pay attention now. Tony King, please respect your brother, sister. Stop engaging Andrew in side talks. You see, now you're allowing the devil to use you. Romans 8, 38 to 39. Pay attention. Pay attention, guys. For I am sure, I am persuaded, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, question. Paul says nothing in creation can sever you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus, right? Nothing in creation. No created thing can resist, overcome the almighty love of Jesus that preserves you. The almighty love of the Father for those who are in Christ, right? Nothing in all creation, right? Did you guys read it? Are you paying attention, saints? Come on, pay attention. Now, here's my question. He says, nor anything else in creation. Can I ask you a question? Are you also 
part of that creation? Are you also part of that creation? Are your desires also part of that creation? Your thoughts? So Paul says nothing else in all creation. That automatically includes even your thoughts, your desires, your mind, and your will. Not even you. Not even your desires, not even your sinful passions will ever be able to permanently sever you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now you see the dilemma, the paradox, the problem that we creatures face and trying to perfectly harmonize these passages? In case you didn't get it, Romans 8.39, one more time. I don't know if it's sinking in, one more time. Romans 8.39. So you guys get it. Read. Read Romans 8:39. Well, then first last can come in and take over. He's tired. Nor height, nor depth, nor anything, anything else in creation. But wait, you're in creation. Your heart is part of creation. Your desires are a part of creation. Your mind is part of creation. So nor anything else in all creation, not even your own creaturely desires, sinful passions, your volition, none of that can sever you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is powerful, isn't it? Not even you, not even your wicked sinful passions, not even your volition, not even your desires. That's why if Andrew Martin was truly born of the Spirit and he belonged to Christ, it is only a matter of time where he's going to fall on his face in tears and saying, Jesus, I love you. I know you're real. You are God and you're the God of my life. I'm sorry for being away all these years. And you even see it in his heart. He can't help but come to Christian channels and help Christians glorify Christ and spread the Gospels and get people to become believers in Jesus. Right? So I hope that answered that question, Louisa. Yeah, but sort of truth. They'll tell you, but the sheep can go astray. So no one can pluck the sheep, but the sheep can go astray. But then he goes looking for that sheep. Right? Exactly. I like what John Inc. said. He put it together wonderfully. Both sides are for our benefit to encourage and to warn us at the same time. 100%. These passages that warn about being cut off from Christ should humble you, keep you fearful, and in love with Jesus, but these passages that say nothing can separate you from Christ should encourage you not to lose hope that you're never beyond the love of Christ, beyond his reach. So these passages serve the purpose of keeping you balanced so you're not overconfident. Hey, Jesus loves me and you live like the devil. Or so fearful of salvation, you freak out, you lose joy, you're paranoid, and you're miserable because God will never be pleased with me. Exactly. They're there. That's, again, the wisdom of God. They're both there to keep you balanced. You don't go to either extreme. Right? Clear? Everyone with me so far? Okay, 604. I got 26 more minutes, and I got to shut it down. But, Marcy, now you're not fearful, right? Now you're not fearful? In light of what I just read, you're not fearful? Yeah, just want to make sure before I move on. Okay, we got 25 more minutes and I got to shut down. But you're not scared now, right? I just want to know you have the peace of Jesus Christ because Isaiah 26, 3, what did he say to you, Marcy? He keeps you in perfect peace because... You are focused on him, right? And give, let me give you other passages to encourage you, Marcy, because I don't want you to be afraid. John 14, 27. Good. I don't want you to despair for your salvation. John 14, 27. And we'll take a question or two because I got to get ready for the other stream. John 14, 27, Marcy. And this is for everyone else. Let me now give you some encouragement, especially in light of the coronavirus. Peace I leave with you, Marcy, and everyone else who loves Jesus. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, 
because the peace of the world is fake. It's temporary. It cannot last forever, and it's conditional. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let me repeat what Jesus just said to Marcy and everyone else. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't be troubled and afraid of coronavirus 19. Stop. Children, don't you know my father is in love with you? I am in love with you and the spirit is in love with you. We are almighty over your circumstances and coronavirus. Stop freaking out. Don't be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Okay. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. Guys, did you hear she just told you what she has? Because she said it publicly, pray for her. Marcy Lynn is a nurse. And she has cancer. And last time she told me, she believes she has only a few more years to live on this earth. Guys, make it a habit to pray for her day and night and even have people fast for her. Because God can destroy that cancer and give her many more years on in this life. But being with Jesus is far better. Marcy Lynn, she just told you she has cancer. Plead the blood of Jesus that if God is pleased, destroy that cancer and give her many more years. But really, at the end of the day... Being with Jesus is better because if you're in, in the presence of Jesus, you'll be completely, everlastingly cancer-free, pain-free, disease-free, no misery, no sadness, no depression. But pray for your sister in Jesus' name. Pray for your sister in Jesus' name. Stay strong, connection, in Jesus' name. Okay? Pray for her. She's a nurse. With her cancer... She's working in a hospital, and now she's going to be bombarded with people with the coronavirus. And she's there being Jesus. Notice, with cancer, she doesn't go retire in her house. She's still actively working as a nurse, knowing she's going to come into contact with people with the virus. But she's doing it because she knows Jesus, her Lord, is alive. He loves her, and death will not be the end of her. May she be a testimony to us. Okay. John 16, 33. So now will you commit praying for Marcy Lynn by name? Pray for her. God keep her perfectly whole. And if he wants, destroy that cancer and flood her in his, in his love and peace and even fast forward. Can you commit to praying for your sister? Knowing she has cancer, she's working in the hospital still as a nurse because she loves Jesus and is trusting in Jesus. Marcy Lynn. Now let's read John 16, 33. Marcy and everyone. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, what does he mean in me? In your union with me, as you stay connected to me, as you stay in love with me, as you speak to me in prayer, and hear my words in the Bible, and meditate on them, and act upon them, and live them out. In me, union with me, connected to me, you might have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In the world... People are panicking, epidemic, coronavirus, stores are closing, restaurants are co closing, traveling is being banned, schools are closing, the NBA, NBA shut down for the season, Disney World shut down, panicking. But Jesus says in me, trust in me, be in love with me, pray to me, study my word, and I will give you a peace that transcends all understanding. Right? John 16, 33. Now let's go to John 14. Let's read. Now here's where I want everyone specifically to pay attention. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Really, really pay attention to the beautiful words and promise of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? John 14, verses 1 to 6. Watch here. Okay. Let not your heart be troubled. You see how many times Jesus says it? Don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Pay attention, guys. Read with me. Please read this. you got to read this because I want it to sink in by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. You trust in my Father. Trust in me. Now watch his promise. Marcy and everyone else. 
Jesus cannot lie. He is alive. He's not dead. He's alive. He's real. And here's his promise. Guys, hear his promise. Please, Holy Spirit, take these words and etch it in their being to hear the promise of Jesus. Notice his promise. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. See his promise? If there weren't mansions in my Father's house, I tell you plainly, I don't lie to you. I'll never lie to you because I'm the truth. I can't lie. But I'm telling you the truth. Marcy, everyone else, Luisa, this is for your two sons. Marcy and Luisa, this is for your two sons. I have prepared mansions for all of you. And Luisa, your sons are in two mansions in my presence waiting for you to be reunited to them. Marcy, I tell you the truth. I cannot lie and I will not lie. I have a mansion and the deed is yours. It belongs to you, paid in full by my blood. Don't be afraid, my precious daughter. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and pre prepare a place for you, I will come again. My promise to you, Marcy, Luisa. This is not just referring to the second coming where Jesus will return to it physically. You know what he means by come again? Every one of us who belong to Jesus, when it's time for us to die, he will come again to greet us into heaven. I won't abandon you. When death knocks at your door, open it up because I'll be on the other side saying, welcome. Enter, my daughter. Marcy, enter and embrace the everlasting arms that will never let you go, that's preserving you now, the everlasting arms of your God and Savior who's in love with you because I love you. I'm in love with you, Marcy, and all you who believe in me. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. See, notice his promise. I'm coming to take you home to be with me, to live with me where I am. You will be with me. Marcy, you will be next to me. You'll be walking with me. You'll be talking with me because I promise you, my beloved child. And Luisa, I promise you, your sons are with me now. I cannot lie to you and I won't lie to you. But do you believe? But do you believe? Now let's read the rest of it. You believe. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What do you mean you do not know the way? I am your way home. I am your path to everlasting glory. I am the way. And because I am the truth, I cannot lie to you. There is a mansion with your name on it, Marcy. There is a mansion with your name on it, Luisa. There is a mansion with my name on it. All you who love him, there are mansions and our names are on it. I can't lie to you. And I am life. And because I am life, you can never die. John, 8, John 14, verses 18 to 19. John 14, verses 18 to 19. I think we're going to have to retitle this session as well. We'll see. John 14, verses 18 to 19. I will not leave you comfortless. Marcy, Louisa, every one of you, listen to his words. Jesus just said, I'm the truth. I can't lie. He is real. Listen. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me. Now watch this promise. Guys, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit it sinks in and makes you just cry with tears of joy and happiness. Jesus, how much you love me. I love you. Thank you for coming into this world and destroying my fear of death because you conquered death. You rose. Thank you, Master. You didn't have to do this. You did. John 14, 18, and 19. Notice 19, what it says. But ye see me, because I live, 
Because I'm alive, I can't die. I'm alive and I will never die. You will live also. John 14, 19. Let's look at it again. Notice what he says. Louisa, Jesus says to you, Louisa, woman, weep no more. Your sons are alive. Do you know why they're alive, Louisa? Because I, their Lord, who loves them, live. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Ye shall live also. Are you with me there? Okay, now, let me now blow you away even more. Let me blow you away even more. Do you remember what John 14, 3 said? Guys, you remember what John 14, 3 said? Let's look at it again because we're going to end it with this because my time is up. Okay, John 14, 3. Let's, let's read it. Guys, focus now. Focus. No distractions of Satan. Focus. He's infinitely amazing and beautiful. So I'm about to cry thinking about it. <clears throat> He's too beautiful. Anyway, John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I'm going to take you to be with me. You're going to be with me next to me, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, let me show you where Jesus is. Remember, he can't lie, right? He just gave you his word. You will be with me. Where I am, you will dwell. Now, let me blow you away here. You, get, you guys don't get, want to get blown away? If this doesn't move you to tears and get on your knees and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, <clears throat> thank you, thank you, my friend, my brother. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me show you. Let me show you what I mean. John 17, 23 and 24. Pay attention. John 17, 23 and 24. Watch here. Guys, pay attention. Pay attention. Please pay attention. I want you to just fall in love with King Jesus. Watch. John 14. I'm sorry. John 17, 23, 24. Not 14. John 17, 23, 24. Okay, I did say it. Guys, pay attention. Jesus is prayer to the Father. Abba, Father. He's praying for you. Jesus is praying to the Father for you. Listen. I in them, Father. These believers, all who believe, I'm in them, Father. And you are in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know, the world may know that you have sent me. Now watch this. Pay attention here. And you love them as you love me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. That's my desire for them. That they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou loves me before the foundation of the world. Now understand what Jesus just prayed. I don't think it's sunk in. Jesus says, Father... Those you've given me, they have to be where I am. Where I am, they're going to be there with me because you give me whatever I ask. I want them with me. Where I am, they'll be there with me, next to me, and that glory they will see that you gave me. The glory you gave me because you have loved me before the world. But here's where I don't think you caught it. John 17, 23, one more time. Put in the ESV, ESV real quickly. ESV. John 17, 23. I don't think you caught it. Watch here. Watch here. I and them and you and me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love me. That should blow you away. You know what Jesus just said? Guys, listen. Listen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, listen. Jesus said to Marcy, Louisa, and to all of us, Louisa, Marcy, do you know my father loves you just as much as he loves me? That's what he just said. That the world may know you love them just as you love me. My father, my father loves you as much as he loves me. He adores you just as much as he adores me. He's in love with you just as much as he's in love with me. And then my answer, my question is, how is that possible? And Jesus says, because I live in you. Because I live in you and I'm in love with you, my father is in love with you because he's in love with the Jesus that's in you. 
And if I'm in you, all my father sees is me and you. How can he not love you just as much as he loves me? <laughs> because I'm in you. And when I'm in you, my father cannot help but adore you. My father is in love with you and he loves you just as much as he loves me because I'm in you. And Jesus said, where I am, where I am, you shall be. Where I dwell, you shall dwell. Now, King James Version, John 1, 18. John 1, 18. Okay. Okay, King James Version, John 1, 18. And we're going to end it because I got to get ready. Okay, pay attention. Now, remember Jesus said, you will be with him where he's at. Guys. Let this sink in by the power of the Spirit. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. See, you didn't catch it. John says Jesus dwells in the bosom of the Father. The bosom of the Father. He's in the very heart of the Father. Jesus says, you're going to be where I am. But Jesus, you dwell in the very heart of the Father. You are his very heart. So if I'm going to be with you where you are, are you saying, I too will be in the very heart of the Father, in the very bosom of the Father? And he says, absolutely. Because of me, because of me, <laughs> because of me, Marcy, <clears throat> Louisa, your sons, all of you, Mike A.D., all of you, will be living in the very heart, the very bosom of my Father. Because where I am, there you must be. You must and you shall be with me in my Father's heart. Why? Why, Jesus? I don't deserve it. And you know what he says? It has nothing to do with you deserving it. It has to do with me being in love with you. And Jesus is saying to us through his word, I love you. I'm in love with you. And my love is all powerful to save you. And there is no power in creation to ever break you off from my love for you. Rest assured, not even coronavirus can destroy my love for you. But trust me. Trust in me, love me, and don't doubt, I love you. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. You are real. Keep us in love with you and bless us. And my daughters, keep them in love with you and protect them, protect us. Give us the grace to make you happy and not to shame you and be Jesus to the world that's panicking. And Lord, provide for us so we can finish the race with honor until we meet you. We love you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. He is Jehovah to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Now, Protestants, send that link. In half an hour, I'm going to be doing another live stream, blog talk, blog, talk radio. On Islam and Christianity, give them the link. Guys, click on it. Half an hour, God willing, I go live. Pray for me, my health, and my daughters. Pray for my holiness and pray for the provision to come in to continue to do ministry. God willing, tomorrow's the day of prayer. Pray and fast that King Jesus, who's almighty over coronavirus, will show up and reveal himself in this epidemic and bring people to his feet. Because they need Jesus more than they need a cure for coronavirus. And Lord willing, if I don't do a stream tomorrow, I'll do it Monday, God willing. Love you guys. Christ is risen. And guys, commit to praying for Marcy Lynn. She has cancer, yet she's still working in a hospital as a nurse with a weakened immune system because she doesn't care about coronavirus. She has peace and knows that Jesus is alive and he loves her. And even death won't be the end of her. So pray for your sister, Marcy Lynn. Take care, guys.